Hello, Year 11s. We are moving on to the next topic in P8, which is forces in collisions. So what we are going to see in today's lesson is what are the dangers caused by large decelerations? In case of uh, different types of decelerations we have, what will be the typical forces, the magnitude of typical forces involved in such situations? And uh, calc estimate for our everyday tra road transport, the speed, acceleration, and forces involved. Okay, so these are the things that we are going to see in today's lesson. So we are going to start by looking at an example. So you have one example here about stopping a car safely. So this is the question you have. A car has a mass of uh, 1000 kilograms and moves with a velocity of this much. The driver brings a car to a stop in 15 seconds. What braking force is applied? OK, so we have the mass here. It is moving with a velocity. So that is our initial situation. The driver brings the car to a stop. So V has to be zero. And this happens in time T of 15 seconds. What is the force applied? So you they are asking you for the force. They have given you the mass. So whenever mass is given and they ask you for force, the first equation that should come to our mind is the one that we have from Newton's second law. And which one is that? Force is equal to mass times acceleration. So we do have mass in the question, but we don't have acceleration directly. But do we have the data to find the acceleration? Think about the equation for acceleration. What is the equation for acceleration? Acceleration is change in velocity divided by time. So if we go for change in velocity, Yes, we know the initial velocity, we know the final velocity, we know the time. So if we plug in all the values, you will get that the force is uh, minus 1000 newtons. So minus sign tells you that the force is acting in the opposite direction or it is decelerating. OK, so that is what we have here. The braking force needed to stop the car in 15 seconds. So in this situation or in this example, the car has taken 15 seconds. So the braking force needed to stop the car in 15 seconds is 1000 newtons. OK, so I hope this bit is clear to all of you. Now, I don't know if you noticed in the previous slide, it was said stopping a car safely. And here it is said stopping a car suddenly. So we have the same car, 1000 kilograms. And it is moving with the same speed or velocity itself, 15 meter per second. OK. The problem now here is in the previous question, the driver brings the car to stop in 15, 1, 5 seconds. Here, the driver is bringing the car to stop in one second. So there is a sudden stop there. Now, stopping a car suddenly means large deceleration. So that is what we are going to see. OK, if there is large deceleration, why does that matter? We are going to see. So we have very similar situation like last time. Mass of the car is 1000 kilograms. Velocity is 15 meters per second. It is coming to stop. The only difference here is it is coming to stop in one second. So just like how we found out the braking force in the previous example, same method, we are going to find out the braking force here also. Mass times acceleration. Acceleration is V minus U. This is our U coming to stop means our V is zero. Time is one second. So if we do the calculation, wow, look at the force. OK, the braking force needed to stop the car in one second is 15,000 newtons. OK, so that is what our calculation shows. So let us compare the two situations we had in the first one. The braking force required to stop the car in 15 seconds was 1000 newtons. But the braking force required to stop the car in one second is 15,000 newton. So the person, suppose there was a person in the car 
when the car stopped in 15 seconds, the force experienced by the person was 1000 newtons. But when the same car stopped in one second, the same person would have experienced 15,000 newton. Okay, so what does this tell you? The less the time it takes to stop the car, more is going to be the impact of the force. So that's sudden stopping, which causes a large amount of deceleration. Why is that sudden stopping causing so much deceleration? Look at the equation for acceleration. Acceleration is V minus U over T, isn't it? So A and T are inversely proportional. So when T decreases, automatically A will increase. So that sudden stopping of large deceleration, what will it do? It will create a very large stopping force. So that is our main, uh, the main thing you have to take away from this part of the slide. So if we stop all of a sudden, that is going to create, that is going to exert a lot of force on us. So what can we do? So exerting a lot of force on us means that's not going to be safe for us. So what can we do to make it safe for us? Or what can we do to make it safe for the driver and the passenger? How can we make sure they are safe? What can we do to make sure they are safe? The main safety features that we generally have in a car are the seat belts, the airbags, then there is a crumple zone in the front and a crumple zone at the back. So we will choose one of the safety features and we will see what, uh, why is it designed that way. The basic idea is the same with all of them. So let's choose a seat belt and we will see how it makes the car more safe. So let's concentrate on seat belts. So what would happen generally when we are stopping all of a sudden, what will happen? We will have a large deceleration. So what ideally the passenger wants to have is do not stop all of a sudden, travel for some more time before stopping. Okay, so that is what ideally the uh, passenger would want. So how does the seat belt help us to do that? So the seat belt prevents the passenger from suddenly going and hitting the windscreen or the dashboard, whatever you have in the front. So it will stretch. The seat belt is flexible, isn't it? So it will stretch, which will then increase the time of collision or increase the impact time. And as we saw in the previous slide, when the time increases, the acceleration decreases, which then decreases the impact force. So is that idea clear? So the seat belt stretches, which means it increases the time of collision. And when the time of collision increases, the acceleration decreases, which then decreases the impact force. One more thing what the seat belt does is, instead of, uh, if the seat belt is not there, uh, as we said earlier, you are immediately going and hitting whatever is there in front of you. But the seat belt will uh, spread that force to the different parts of the body more evenly. Instead of just one part getting it, it will spread it through the body. Okay. So just as we saw in uh, the seat belts, actually, irrespective of which safety method it is, whether it is seat belts, airbags or crumple zones, whichever one it is, the main idea behind all of them is to increase the time it takes for collision. That is the main idea behind all the uh, safety measures. So why are we increasing the time? It then decreases the rate of change of momentum, which then decreases the force of collision. The only new thing you have seen here is it decreases the rate of change of momentum. How, where does momentum come from? So uh, we know that from Newton's second law, force is equal to mass times acceleration, right? And what is acceleration mass times V minus U divided by T? 
So that is MV minus MU divided by T. What is this MV? Momentum. Remember? So And the last thing that we need is, so we are applying brakes. When you are applying brakes, actually what is happening? What are the energy changes that is happening there? So when you are applying brakes, actually you are applying a force to the brakes of the vehicle. Then the work will be done. Uh, so friction is the main person there. So the friction between the brakes and the tire or the wheel disc to which those brake pads are attached, uh, friction between them will do the work, which will then reduce the kinetic energy of the vehicle or the speed of the vehicle, slowing it down. Most of the times, uh, in any practical situation, uh, some energy, which the energy of the moving vehicle was basically its kinetic energy. So some of that energy will be transferred uh, to thermal energy, which will then heat up the brakes, the temperature of the brakes will increase. Now, what we need there in terms of energy transfer is you can get a question, how much, uh, what is the work done to stop the car? Whatever is the kinetic energy of the car, that much work has to be done to stop the car. So if you have a car, say, like we said before, which is having a mass of 1000 kilograms and it is moving at, say, five meters per second, then the kinetic energy of the car is given by kinetic energy is equal to half m v square so half times thousand times five square so half times thousand times five square how much is that so 50 uh, Sorry, 500 half times 1000 should be 500 times 5 square, which is 12,500 joules. So that is the kinetic energy of the car. So how much work do you have to do to stop the car? That is same as the kinetic energy of the car. So that is 12,500 joules. Okay. Then another question you can get is the work done to stop the car is force. Work done is always force times distance moved. So this force is the braking force. So they can give you the braking force and then ask you if the car is moving at five meters per second. What distance will it travel before it stops? So you from the speed given to you, you can calculate the kinetic energy that is given here. And then say they are telling you the braking force is uh, 100 newtons. Okay, this is a random value. Then 100 newtons times the distance is what you have to calculate is equal to 12,500. And D is equal to 12,500 divided by 100, which is 125 meters okay so this is how you find out uh, you can also find out how much distance the car will travel before it comes to a stop okay so these are the different things that you need to keep in mind so if you know the speed at which the car is traveling you can work out the kinetic energy using the equation half mv square once you work out the kinetic energy, that will be the same as the work done to stop the car. And if you know the braking force, you can find the distance it travels before it comes to stop. Or if you know the distance it travels, you can find the force. Okay. Is that a bit clear, all of you? So these are the main things that you need to uh, keep in mind.
okay so the main to summarize uh, the main things about this lesson is a large acceleration means uh, it is more dangerous so you have to reduce you have to increase the time it takes for the vehicle to stop so it, if you increase the time it takes for the vehicle to stop there will be less acceleration and less acceleration means less impact force all the safety measures that we have are designed for this purpose whether it is seat belts whether it is airbags crumple zones everything they increase the time of collision which in turn decreases the impact force and then you can find out how much distance a, a car will travel before it comes to rest so for that if you know the speed at which the car is traveling find out the kinetic energy that kinetic energy uh, will be the same as the work you have to do to bring the car to a rest and then from that if you you know the, now the work done to stop the car which is the same as the kinetic energy and then work force times distance is that work done if you know the braking force you can find the distance it takes it travels before it comes to rest okay so that is all with stopping distance and the safety. Okay then, see you. Bye-bye.